Yes, even as smooth landing at St. Barth as possible because we are so insanely slow and we can stop insanely quickly because of that. Now, but this right here is the Boeing 737. And of course, it has wings. And of course, it has little um, parts of the wing that can kind of detach and be put at an angle. This is what you call flaps, right? So we can put them out right now. 737 does have flaps that come down quite a bit. I mean, 40 degrees right here. That's great for if you're on an approach and don't want to fly extremely fast. Yes, because of course, flaps like this, they enhance the lift capabilities of the wing and make the plane be able to fly slower, which is great again. St. Bartholomew Runway. You wouldn't want to be crashing down onto this at 500,000 knots. So yeah, this is 40, but everybody, of course, this is no normal 737 because I can... Keep pressing the flaps down button and the flaps will come down even further. Everybody, yes, take a look. This is a lot more than 40 degrees, a lot more than 60 degrees, it's even more than 80 degrees. Yes, everybody, I have made the 737 so that its flaps come down all the way up to 90 degrees. Literally a wall of flaps here. Is this gonna work out well? I don't know. I mean, we talked so much about special airplanes like the 720B by Boeing, which had massive flaps that could come down quite a way, I think all the way up to 450 degrees. And that way the plane was able to fly at extremely slow speeds, land on extremely short runways and take off from them. There's no way. I'm gonna give up. I'm gonna give up! No! Take a look at this. Yeah, I think they're kind of crashing into the pod here. It doesn't matter. Yeah, 90 degrees, that's quite excessive. I don't really know any other airplane that does this. That's kind of conventional. Maybe the Cessna L19. Yes, this is a very a vintage bird here. I think that one goes down to 60 degrees. That's a lot of flaps. I mean, actually, I do wonder whether this actually flies at all. Let's maybe go ahead and put them up a little bit more. Let's see if we can take off from the St. Bartholomew runway right here. Now we are at a very conventional flap setting. We can put the flaps down as we roll. I mean, the problem is obviously that a huge amount of flaps, you know, induce a lot of drag and makes your airplane accelerate at a very much slower pace. Come on faster. We need to go faster. 80 knots, something like that. Very fast. Yes. All right. Now at 100 knots, let's put the flaps down all the way, which should make the airplane very diligently lift. Okay. I think this might have been a wrong approach to this video. All right. Let's pretend this didn't happen. This is a clean configuration 737. Now we are flying at 180 knots and the plane is almost struggling actually at this kind of speed without any flaps. We shall put some down. My question now is how slow can we get the 737 to fly? 90 knots? Maybe something like that? Oh yeah, all right. As you can see, the slats have also come down, which is kind of the flaps but in front of the wing. So this should be great for performance. We're very much ballooning right here. Let's slow the engines down and see how much we've improved the airplane. Maybe we've actually made a plane that can land at extremely short runways because it can fly so slowly. Take a look at this. You have no idea how hard this was to actually animate because there are lots of little parts here in the wing, all of which are animated separately. And so I'm actually kind of proud of this work. It looks pretty great, huh? And of course there are, you know, some little, um, uh, gaps here, which is important for airflow. Um, I don't know how stable the wing is now. Maybe the flaps might fall off any second, but that's fine. But guys, I think I've got great news. This plane flies quite happily. We're still state. We're actually able to climb here at this. We are extremely slow for our 737. And this thing doesn't look like it's going to stall at all. We've got an insanely high angle here. That looks a little bit ridiculous. Kind of. That's kind of what the flaps do. <laughs> I think that's a big problem about these flaps now is the tail strike problems. I mean, we talked so much about the A320 one, where it's recommended that not all flaps, you know, the four quarters of flaps are used because a tail strike can very much happen on the relatively long A321. This is a yapping session about flaps. Let's maybe see how slowly we can land and how quickly we can stop. The good thing is, once again, we've got an amazing amount of drag here. And so we are stopping very, very quickly. This is kind of the technique that Hawker actually uses in their private jet. They have flaps that can go all the way down to 75 degrees. And that happens when the plane touches down. They practically put the flaps down all the way on touchdown to stop, kind of like spoilers. Perfect idea. Everybody, we, I think, have made some improvements. Or, you know what, maybe I, I just made it worse. Maybe see if we can take off with, like, these 90 degrees of flaps. I mean, take a look at this drag. I think I've made everything worse. The plane's now so unstable. The wing's gonna fall apart in a second. Take a look at how slowly the airplane accelerates. Like, it's genuinely palpable. Come on, come on, you're fine. At 108 knots, you should be able to rotate soon. Yes! 
Actually, the performance hasn't gotten much better. There is probably a reason that like, 40 degrees is like the, in general, the maximum flap setting that is available on airliners like this. I think we've induced a bit of risk here. I mean, I don't want to know what happens if one part of the flaps falls off. It's going to be deadly. Uh, uh, left flap, surface gone. What happens then? It's probably not going to be animated. Yes! All right, so we've lost the left flap here, um, virtually. The plane is going to die. We can literally not even counter steer. Hey, we're going to crash into a canyon now. I think that is live gold. All right, let's maybe do once again the St. Barth test. We should be able to land. Take a look at these massive flaps. With, with just plane flies like a little bird at 115. Actually, this works quite well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All good. I think we can even, like, we're so slow. We can just float that landing. I mean, the PC-12 that flies here regularly also flies at our speed. This is perfect. 100, 30, 20. Hold up. Hold up. Yes. Even a smooth landing at St. Barth is possible because we are so insanely slow and we can stop insanely quickly because of that. I think we've then generally made a bit of improvement. Hey, there we go. We can now finally see the fruit of our work. Part of which also is that there's a lot of vibration here. Ah, uh, come on. Let's maybe run this thing on like no weight at all. We just want a little fuel here and see if we can take off here from the runway 28 side because of our 90 degree flaps. Now, everybody, Boeing, take note. Come on, let's go full power. Take off out of here. Perfect. Just like that. Let's go ahead and start putting the flaps down as we accelerate. Take a look at the speed and power mixed with the wing. Yeah, speed and power indeed. Yes, now, now, come on, let's do it. Now the flaps are coming down all the way. The plane wants to take off on its own. That was just a little landing gear test. Yes. With the flaps fully down now, this airplane goes like a rocket because of the beautiful lift. Everybody, we have made big changes to this plane. Nothing but improvements. Yes, we can even do a loop here because of our immense flaps. Actually, this plane flies a bit better than I would have thought. I would have actually thought that the airflow would be so disrupted because of the wall of flaps here, but this plane flies relatively well. So there we go. That's our answer to the question. So I thank you guys so much for watching this video. This plane is genuinely going crazy. Have I broken the physics now? Because it's like literally doing loops. Yeah, it's, it's, it is literally pulling the loops here. Uh, not bad. So I thank you guys so, so much for watching this Flappy Bird video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.